Hello, Internet. My name's Tyler. I've been a comic nerd and a science nerd for most of my life. And this is the product of that. Thank you. Did you know that the Winchester 223 Super Short Magnum is widely believed to be the fastest bullet in the world? It's capable of reaching speeds of up to 2,700 miles per hour, or about three and a half times the speed of sound. And the most powerful steam locomotive ever built was the Allegheny, whose boilers were capable of delivering up to 8,000 horsepower. Of course, we all know Superman is faster and more powerful than both of these machines. Well, with his ability to travel faster than the speed of light and overpower robotics far superior to the Allegheny. And about all that able-to-leap-tall buildings in a single bound stuff, well duh, Superman's flight is... Wait a minute. Superman's flight is actually one of the greatest mysteries in comic book history. He has no wings, he has no jets, so... how can he fly? Well, early on in Superman's run, he actually couldn't. The Man of Steel spent many Golden Age years jumping, with his original form only able to leap about one-eighth of a mile at a time. But when Fleischer Studios was given the opportunity to turn the comic book legend into a series of shorts, they animated him flying instead of jumping to save money. The explanation eventually given was that Superman's home planet, Krypton, had a gravitational force significantly greater than that of Earth's. 33 times to be exact, causing Superman's species to evolve muscles and bone structure capable of dealing with the mass of gravity. So when Superman was on Earth, his body was able to push off the planet and travel higher and faster than a normal human jump. Much like how humans can jump higher while on the moon. In fact, the moon's gravitational force is roughly six times less than Earth's, or around 16.5%, meaning that on the moon, the average human male without a suit could jump about 10 feet directly upward. This would make you capable of jumping onto the rim of a basketball goal, the goalpost in a football field, or even the average one-story house. If you came from a planet like Krypton with 33 times the gravity of Earth, you'd be able to leap many buildings in a single bound, as well as most machines and animals. Heck, jumping a Tyrannosaurus Rex would be child's play for you. In fact, the average length of a humpback whale is probably a good measurement of about how high you could jump. It might even look like you were flying. However, we quickly run into a problem with this explanation. It's not high enough. Modern day Superman has been seen flying clear from Earth's surface into outer space. That's a heck of a higher jump than a humpback whale. Or how about we look at it like this. In the 1993 Olympics, Avier Sotomayor set the current world record for the highest vertical jump when he managed to leap an astounding 8 feet and half an inch into the air. To this day, that is the highest a human being has ever jumped. But even if we gave him Superman's gravity advantage, he would still only clear about 265 feet. Now, don't get me wrong, that's... Very impressive. In fact, it's enough to jump over literally any animal that's ever existed. But it's also only enough to get about two-tenths of the way up the Empire State Building. And that's with some generous rounding. It definitely can't get you into space. In addition, Superman's often seen hovering just above the ground and seems to be able to stop and redirect himself in mid-flight. And that's why DC later retconned this explanation of Superman's flight into a more... scientific one. Intercomic book writer John Byrne, 1986. Around the time of a massive DC-wide reboot, John Byrne gave fans a new explanation for Superman's flight. Something called a bioelectric aura. This aura is one of the many ways Superman manifests superpowers under the radiation of the yellow sun. Oh yeah, in case you didn't know that, practically all of Superman's powers come from yellow sun radiation. When the sun rays hit his cells, which evolved under the much weaker red sun of Krypton, Said cells become supercharged and begin to dispense a kind of radiation force field that Superman can consciously choose to either strengthen or weaken. When strengthening the force field, it seems to somehow bend gravity near Superman's body, allowing him to do things like resist powerful attacks, pick up large objects without them crumbling around him, or even fly. In fact, Assad, an elite scientist from the god planet of Apocalypse, once suggested that Superman's flight was more like him pulling himself through the sky by bending space-time. And according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, gravity does indeed bend space-time. The theory basically states that objects like the sun are so incredibly massive that they essentially bend the space around them, pulling lesser objects like planets toward them. And the phenomenon is commonly known as gravity. This explains why light is bent as it passes close to a massive object. As far as the light's concerned, it's traveling in a straight line through bent space. 
And since space and time are interconnected, bending one bends the other, basically meaning that time passes slower for those of us affected by gravity, which explains not only how Superman flies, but how he's capable of moving at such high speeds. He can't bend the space around himself without bending the time around himself. So I suppose the next question is, how does he generate his own gravitational field? Enter gravitons, hypothetical particles with no charge or mass that carry gravitational force. If Superman's cells are somehow creating or manipulating these, then it provides a nearly flawless explanation for how the Man of Steel flies. The only problem, of course, is that these particles are completely theoretical and have yet to be observed directly or indirectly. We only try to use them to explain certain complex theories and anomalies in quantum mechanics. Like black holes, for instance. But hey, if there's anything I've learned from reading Superman, it's that you never know what's out there. Hey everyone, Tyler here. Thanks for watching my video, I legitimately appreciate it. You can find links to articles discussing some of the things that I talked about in this video in the description below. Like if you enjoyed this episode, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. The link over here will send you to a video made by THE Stan Lee that inspired me to make this series. And the link over here will send you to a video of other people discussing how they think Superman flies, when I went around and polled a random audience. So, yeah, you can just hit that whenever you like. Seriously, I'm not going to do anything while I'm waiting here. I I'm not that creative. <laughs>